guys, it's Izzy here and today we are going to find out what are the longest books on my to be read list or my TBR. We're going to be using my Goodreads shelves for this so if you guys feel like to add me as a friend on Goodreads I will have it linked down below in the pinned comment. We're going to be doing this by genre because that is how I have my shelves categorized so seeing what is the longest book in each genre that I own that I want to read. Let's get into it. <music> We're going to be going in alphabetical by genre or alphabetical order by genre so we're going to be starting with classics. Another random tidbit here is when I do my ebooks I choose the longest book on my TBR and that's how I choose which ebook I'm going to read in a month. So let's see what the longest classic is. The longest classic is definitely what I expected to be in Nana by Leo Tolstoy. This is a beast. I am terrified of it. I know I'm gonna definitely have to do the audiobook along with ebook. Les Mis, I no, Les Mis is one of the longest books I've ever read and I did, I read that physically but did it along with the audiobook. But the longest book I've ever read was a classic and it was The Count of Monte Cristo. So here's what Anna Karenina is about, or at least the Goodreads description. Tolstoy's epic novel of love, destiny, and self-destruction is a gorgeous new cloth bound edition, that's irrelevant. But Anna Karenina seems to have everything, beauty, wealth, popularity, and an adored son. But she feels that her life is empty until the moment she encounters the impetuous officer Count Vronsky. Their subsequent affair scandalizes society and family alike and soon brings jealousy and bitterness into its wake. Contrasting with this tale of love and destruction is the wildly, is the vividly observed story of Levin, a man striving to find contentment and a meaning to his life, and also a self-portrait of Tolstoy himself. I, again, I have not read any Tolstoy. He, his books very much do intimidate me. Might be like, I feel like we might have read just bits and pieces of Tolstoy in school, but that was a while back that was like five years ago I don't really remember and I wasn't passionate about literature back then which is sad but um the version I have is translated by Richard Peaver and Larissa Volonhansky. The longest contemporary on here is Beach Music by Pat Conroy. This author is very hit or miss for me I feel like I've read two of his books and they were basically exactly the same the characters and all his characters have gone through the same trauma, his main characters anyway, the same trauma and do I call it trauma porn? I might like I I could say a lot but I don't want to be like too vulgar and spoilery I guess. So this book was a gift and it's not one I would pick up on my own at least I don't think but let's read what the description says. So an American expat in Rome unearths his family legacy in the sweeping novel by the acclaimed author of The Prince of Tides, I did read that, and The Great Santini. A southerner living abroad, Jack McCall is scarred by tragedy and betrayal. See, I told you, they all had tragedy. His desperate desire to find peace after his wife's suicide, they all have a family me member who commits suicide, draws him into a painful intimate search for the one haunting seeker in his family's past, that can heal his anguished heart, spanning three generations and two continents. So I do like multi-generation and it did say part of it in Italy, which we know I have spent time in Italy and I love it. Spanning three generations and two continents from the contemporary ruins of the American South to the ancient ruins of Rome. Comparing the South to Rome, okay. From the unutterable horrors of the Holocaust to the lingering trauma of Vietnam, Beach music sings with life's pain and glory. It is a novel of lyric intensity and searing truth. Another masterpiece among Pat Connery's legendary and beloved novels. Now Pat Connery's books don't suck. Like reading the first one probably would have been enough because I read that and I was South Abroad and I loved it. It was a five star. And then I go read, what was it? The Prince of the Tides. And I'm like, these characters are literally the exact same, maybe different genders and different names but they are the same like they have all been sexually assaulted they all have had a family member commit suicide it's just I don't want to read 500 pages of the same story every time that's I feel like it's just a waste of my time. We have fantasy and we know fantasy books tend to be on the chunkier side so 
let's see like how close oh my gosh i haven't even been telling y'all how long these books are i guess i'll start doing that now the fantasy book is actually quite a shock it's i have two over a thousand pages but this one i honestly was not expecting at all and it's midnight sun by stephanie meyer which is 1072 pages this is Twilight Saga number five. So when Edward, Cullen, and Bella Swan met in Twilight, an iconic love story was born. But until now, fans have heard only Bella's side of the story. At last, readers can experience Edward's version in the long-awaited companion novel Midnight Sun. I started the Twilight series 10 years ago, and that was back before I, I was really into reading that I started middle school and reading just went out the door because I had homework for the first time and all that kind of thing so I never finished Twilight so I definitely do need to read Twilight before I pick this up at least in my mind I have to do that because I like things to be chronological. Now we have graphic novels this is kind of fun I guess would be the way to put it because we usually read graphic novels to read something fast and page number doesn't really matter and usually in graphic novels they don't even have the page number on the page but let's see what Goodreads has for me and that is ooh, I really really want to get to this it's been a while and I'm really craving hockey and that is check please book two sticks and scones by Ngozi Uzuku now I'm not going to read the description because this is the second uh, or the yeah book two um, in a series but it is about this hockey player and he's gay and it's it's university hockey I should say and just as um and he falls in love with one of his teammates and it's really cute and I really enjoyed it and I think I read it before I really got into hockey and now since I am a hockey fan I think I'll just like it so much more and again I am patiently waiting for hockey season every day it needs to come back like I've never watched a normal hockey season. COVID has always been a factor. That's just how it's been. Time for my favorite genre and that's historical fiction. I do have quite beefy ones so I don't have a real guess of which is going to be the longest one. It's going to be ooh, maybe a Ken Follett one. His books are really well. Do I have any of them up there? I might have some behind me. Say it's going to be Ken Follett. Let's see though. Ooh, it's not, but Ken Follett did come in second with a book over a thousand pages. The first one is one that again I got at my grandma's house because she just was getting rid of stuff and that is Homeland, The Crown Family Saga number one by John Jakes. So living in the Chicago mansion of his brewery tycoon uncle, Polly Croner, flashes with his proud guardian and forced into life on the city's dark side because Paul Crown, a man driven by power and ambition. Is this gonna be like mobsters? It's Chicago and it's historical fiction and talks about the bad side. So I'm like, do we have mobsters? I haven't really read anything about mobsters. I've watched a few TV shows. I'm like, I'm kind of intrigued. I know there's a lot of like mafia romance. I have not ventured over there yet, but I am intrigued. I am intrigued. And this was 1,183 pages in length. Nonfiction now. Long nonfiction is always intimidating. I don't care who you are because you never know if the storytelling is going to be for, like if it's going to tell like a story or if it's going to be very dry. It's always nerve wracking, but now I always do my nonfiction as audio, but I do follow along in the book as well. It just a lot of times it's the authors doing the narration and I feel like that just adds so much more to the experience. And the pick is in. In the longest page book draft. <laughs> and it is ooh, one that I am excited for and that is A World Undone, The Story of the Great War 1914 to 1918 by G.J. Meyer with 816 pages. World War One is one of my favorite things to learn about. I'm excited that this is the longest one. It's not something that I'm totally intimidated by. First World War is one of history's greatest tragedies and this remarkable and intimate account author G.J. Meyer draws on exhaustive research to bring to life the story of how the Great War reduced Europe's mightiest empires to rubble, killed 20 million people, and cracked the foundation of the world's or foundations of the world we live in today. It repeated itself. I don't know. That was kind of weird. But I do really want to get to that. I don't know if somebody on here recommended it to me. I feel like somebody might have. So if you did, thank you. But this might have been one I found on my own as well because I was, after I saw 1917, I was like, I need to know everything. Yeah. Romance now. Now, romance books, I have read some lengthy ones. None like two over the top. I don't think any have been over 500 pages. 
but romance tends to read faster so the page number doesn't really intimidate me but I think anytime we see something's over 500 pages it can be quite scary but let's see what it is and the longest one is over 500 pages and that is The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger which is 537 pages in length I know the show recently got cancelled for it and I'm gonna watch the show and movie and all of that once I read the book but here's the description. This is the extraordinary love story of Claire and Henry who met when Claire was six and Henry was 36 and were married when Claire was 22 and Henry was 30. Impossible but true because Henry suffers from a rare condition where his genetic clock periodically resets and he finds himself pulled suddenly into its past or future. In the face of this force they can neither prevent nor control, Henry and Claire struggle to lead normal lives is both intensely moving and entirely unforgettable. I know a lot of people like best friends of mine have loved this book or have loved one of the adaptations of it so it is one that I'm definitely going to have to get to. Science fiction now there are some chunky ones. I know I have some like right here from Orbit. I love Orbit's books. They're honestly amazing. And we probably even have some more back there, but let's see what the list has for me. Let's see. It's Dune, which is right there by Frank Herbert at 658 pages. I honestly thought Dune would be longer. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I do like really want to see it because there are a ton of great actors in that movie. But once again, I do want to read the book before I see the movie. So this is set on the desert on the desert planet Arrakis. Dune is a story of the boy Paul Aradius. That's so wrong. Heir to a noble family tasked with ruling an inhospi inhospitable world where the only thing of value is the spice melange, a drug capable of extending life and enhancing consciousness. Coveted across the known universe, melange is a prize worth killing for. When house are yeah, the house is betrayed. The destruction of Paul's family will set the boy on a journey towards a destiny greater than he could ever have imagined. And as he evolves into the mysterious man known as Maud Dib, he will he will bring to fruition humankind's most ancient and un unattainable dream. And the original first edition from 1965 can be found here. I love 1960s sci-fi. If y'all have seen my videos about Philip K. Dick or read my reviews. I just find it so interesting to see how minds were thinking of what the future might be like back in the 1960s because a lot of Philip K. Dick's books take place in the 2020s and it's just interesting to see what he got right, what he got wrong, even if his books weren't necessarily predictions because they are science fiction but it's still so interesting to compare what people were writing as fiction to when we are actually living in that time. We are on our last category now and that is thrillers. Horror also goes into the genre as well so I'm expecting Stephen King to take the cake here as his books are known for being that big but we'll see what we get. And it's not Stephen King. It is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieleski. I bought this book at the Amazon bookstore in Georgetown which I had a great fantastic time there. I know people hate Amazon but it was such a great bookstore and the people working there were amazing but sadly Jeff Bezos closed the bookstore so I think they were just kind of like an experiment thing but I loved it. So this is years ago when House of Leaves, oh um, how long was it first? Um, 709 pages so not that long. But years ago when House of Leaves was first being passed around it was nothing more than a badly bundled heap of paper parts of which would occasionally surface on the internet. No one could have anticipated the small but devoted following the terrifying story would soon command. Starting with an odd assortment of marginalized youth, musician, musicians, tattoo artists, programmers, strippers, environmentalists, and adrenaline junkies, the book eventually made its way into the hands of older generations who not only found themselves in the strangely arranged pages but also discovered a way back into the lives of their estranged children. Now for the first time this astounding novel is made available in book form complete with the original colored words, vertical footnotes, and newly added second and third appendices. The story remains unchanged focusing on a young family that moves into a small home on Ash Tree Lane where they discover something is terribly wrong. Their house is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Of course neither Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist Will Navidson 
nor his companion Karen Green was prepared to face the consequences of that impossibility until the day of their two cho little children wandered off and their voices eerily began to return another story of creatures of creature darkness of an ever-growing abyss behind a closet door and of that unholy growl which soon enough would tear through their walls and consume all their dreams. That sounds amazing. It sounds creepy, but that is what we want from thrillers and horrors and mysteries and all that kind of thing. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you watched all the way through, leave a leaf emoji. Anyone, I know there's multiple, but just leave a leaf emoji. I'll be so thankful that you watched. But as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell to be notified when all my videos go live. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!